to the San Antonio Spurs. The NBA Draft Lottery is over, and the top three are wild. The Spurs continue to be the Spurs, the Hornets jump up and now get a chance to be something, and Damian Lillard is getting help in some form or another. We also saw the sad fallings of Houston and Detroit out of the top three. All that losing was for the fourth and fifth pick. With that said, I want to focus on them top three picks, because I think you'll find by the end, there are a lot more layers to these teams' future selections than you might think. First up, we got the obvious reaction though. The San Antonio Spurs just won the next decade of basketball. Victor Wembanyama is being talked about as the next great icon of basketball. He stands at 7 foot 5 inches, but moves like a slick forward. His powers were so otherworldly that LeBron James called him an alien. And now we see he's about to land his spacecraft in Southern Texas. It was the team up that made sense to everyone coming into the draft lottery, but it still feels kind of surreal it actually happened. San Antonio has a long-standing relationship with French NBA players after the careers of Tony Parker and Boris Diaw. After the results were announced, you even saw Parker tweet out a picture of young Victor wearing a Parker Spurs jersey. I think as much as Wemby was saying all the right things about being happy to go anywhere, he surely under it all was hoping to go play in San Antonio which actually makes sense beyond the past French Spurs players as well. Greg Popovich helped lead former number one overall pick big men David Robinson and Tim Duncan to Hall of Fame careers. Pop is going to know exactly how to build out the next generational big man. Wimby already has all the tools of the modern NBA. He can shoot from deep, take people off the dribble, and create his own shot anywhere on the court. Now add in the discipline of the Spurs franchise, add on top of that the know-how of old school big man basketball from Greg Popovich, are we about to see an unstoppable force grow before our very eyes? And grow is the key word there guys, between the teams that landed in the top four, I don't think Victor could have gotten a better spot from a development standpoint. They're going to be smart about it and take their time with him. If there's one concern about the young star, it's durability and injuries on that type of frame. Yeah, he's 7'5", but only 230 pounds. He needs to have time to build up his strength before he starts really competing, which is something I'd be nervous about if he was immediately thrown in with an aging dame in Portland or the Hornets who want to be relevant and don't forget about the Rockets who are ready to make moves and compete next year. I don't know who's going to tell him, but Houston, that is not happening. When Banyama is walking into the safety net of San Antonio, who is never one to rush things. But don't get me wrong, they've still been building an interesting team down there. Keldon Johnson is shaping up to be a sturdy and dynamic forward. Devin Vassell could be primed to come out swinging on the offensive end this year after last year hitting injury roadblocks. And then guys like Trey Jones, Jeremy Sohan, and Malachi Branham seem like classic steady Spurs players as well, but they were missing that big star prospect. I like a lot of San Antonio's players, but none really seemed destined for superstardom. So they finally decided to completely bottom out and roll the dice for the Powerball that is Wimbanyama. I don't think Popovich is usually a betting man, but this year they saw their chance and in true Spurs fashion, they executed beautifully. The Charlotte Hornets at number two have the critical age old question of NBA drafting. Do you draft the best player available or draft for best fit? Because the clear two guys after Wemby are Scoot Henderson and Brandon Miller, AKA one elite point guard and one really good wing. If you're the Hornets, what do you do? Do you try to run a backcourt of Scoot and LaMelo? I think offensively it could be dynamite. Scoot has this tenacity about him that propels his shorter frame through contact at the rim. He also has great court vision and will find open teammates as a connector. If I'm the Hornets, I see a Westbrook-esque guard that I can pair with my more lanky shot creator style player in LaMelo. Melo has proven he's able to play off ball and knock down shots from a catch and shoot scenario. He's been playing alongside point guard Terry Rozier so understands what it's like to run with another ball handler. However, my issue would be the defense and the true ceiling of having these two together. I can already see the Hornets fans jumping on me, so wait, let me explain. LaMelo is actually fairly underrated when it comes to the defensive end. I see that. His length is able to catch opposing players off guard, and when he's locked in, he can hang on all right. In his first three seasons, he's had a positive defensive box score two times. But that being said, it's not like they're wildly positive box scores. So add in a running mate who's six foot two inches in scoot, and how many stops is that backcourt getting? 
Henderson seems like a guy that's going to try crazy hard on both ends of the floor no matter what, but there's always a ceiling for defensive power when you're a small guard. The Hornets could risk wandering into that realm of the Dame and CJ era of Portland. Offensively gifted guards that get them into the playoffs, but get targeted on the other end and lead to quick series. The other side of the Scoot Henderson draft pick is what is the ceiling of them together versus them individually. If you continue to build around the 6 foot 7 inch LaMelo ball, I think you can unlock his full potential as the primary ball handler and unleash a star. Same could be said of Scoot, but in my eyes, you put them together and they will never be as effective from an individual standpoint. Consistently taking the ball out of each other's hands, I think you might want to draft for best fit. And with that being the case, the Hornets should draft Brandon Miller. The star from Alabama could walk onto that Hornets team and fit perfectly into the starting five. He's a big wing that can offer reliable shooting from deep as well as his own shot creation if the team needs it. Miller will also help fill the hole Bridges left in terms of wing defense. At 6 foot 9 inches and 200 pounds, he'll be able to hang with the lighter wings as well as the bigger power forwards. Overall, I see the Hornets situation as the classic conundrum. Either way, they're getting a great player to provide LaMelo some sort of proof that they can build around him, which is exactly what the Trailblazers have been trying to do with Dame for years. They walked into the night at number 5 and left with the third overall pick. Not a bad deal for a team desperate to contend. Portland is the other side of the coin when it comes to the big draft questions. The Hornets ask, how do we pick? The Blazers ask, do we pick at all? Because Damian Lillard is 32 years old and wants to stay with the team for his whole career. However, he's also a superstar, which means he's also expected to win a championship. After a conference finals appearance in 2019, it looks like that might have been Portland's peak. The front office is left with the task of deciding if they trust Scoot or Miller to come in and be ready to help lift this team back into the playoffs, or if they'd rather shop this pick to a team more desperate for a full rebuild. If I'm the Blazers in this, I'm honestly pretty torn. I think either of those prospects could be great for the franchise in the long term, but this team is young. Outside of Dame, Nurkic, and Grant, it's basically all guys in their young 20s or just reaching up to 25. They would need to make a lot of moves around this pick if they want to compete right now. The flip side of that is, blowing it up would mean you already have a great start with Anthony Simons, Shaden Sharp, and this year's pick. In reality though, I think the Blazers will lean towards trading the pick. What could they get? I would look at teams like Toronto, Utah, or the Wizards, who have some older pieces they could look to move and restart their franchise. Do any of those teams have players that would lift Portland to contention? Maybe the Raptors do with Shockham and OG. Otherwise, I'm not totally convinced. The Blazers should be thrilled they jumped up to third, but now they have quite a tightrope to walk. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and watch my previous videos above. Peace.